What's up guys? Uh, today I'm going to be reviewing this Tactical Tomahawk. This is the CRKT Chogun T-Hawk. T-Hawk standing for Tactical Tomahawk. Very, very cool. Now, I have another Tomahawk down here. This was a Tomahawk that a viewer made for me, which is really, really awesome. Uh, the reason I have this out here is because before I start the review, I kind of want to talk a little bit about the differences between a Tomahawk and a hatchet. A lot of people interchange both um, tools and they there's definitely a lot of confusion of, of definition. What makes a hatchet a hatchet as opposed to a tomahawk being a tomahawk? Well, I can't use this for an example because this is a modern uh, tomahawk, which is full tang, which is very unique. Both tomahawks and um, hatchets historically have been a two-piece thing. You have a wooden handle, you know, or shaft, and then of course your blade or the head of it is gonna be, you know, solid steel. So I'm gonna use this for demonstration purposes, but there's basically two major differences between a tomahawk and a hatchet. The most important one by definition is basically how the blade goes to the handle, okay? In the case of a tomahawk, the handle goes into the blade, or the, in other words, the blade goes from the bottom up, all right? So our handle is uh, tapered, a little bit skinnier on one end, we have an oval shape, all right? And it's a little bit fatter on the other end, all right? Reason being is when you slide your blade up from the bottom, at some point, it's too wide where it can't pass all the way through. Now by design, this makes for a very, very strong tool and or weapon, depending on how you're using it. The more momentum you have, the more swing, the more um, you know gravity you have pulling against this while you're using it, the tighter and stronger it basically attaches to the handle because it's wedging itself up against the wood, which is too fat to, to slip through. The difference, that's a tomahawk. And the difference between that and a, and a hatchet is that 100% of the time, a hatchet, the head is mounted on top of our handle, okay? And obviously it pushes through and then you'd have a, a split in the handle and then you'd put a little wedge in there. But that's, that's by definition, the biggest difference. Um, that's a hatchet and this is a tomahawk. Now by design, a lot of people argue that a tomahawk is a superior design in that it, you know, you have a less of a chance for the head and the, you know, handle to fail where you'd have some kind of a break, you know, or at the very least where the head would actually fly off for, for some reason. It's rare in both cases when you have a nicely made hatchet or tomahawk, but it'd be a lot more rare to have a, a well-made tomahawk fall apart on you basically, as opposed to a hatchet. But you know, this is a very heated topic. A lot of people who are really into these things, both hatchets and tomahawks, they argue till their face is blue. You know, this is what, a, this is why a hatchet's better. No, this is why a tomahawk's better. But anyway, you know, by definition, if you didn't know that, that's basically the biggest difference. Uh, visually, more times than not, at least traditionally, a tomahawk will have a longer, skinnier blade with a shorter cutting edge, okay, as opposed to a hatchet, which would be much shorter and broader. So there you go. Hatchet, its main purpose, obviously, is processing wood, splitting wood. Of course, you can use it for a bunch of things. You can use it to skin animals and all kinds of crap. But uh, the tomahawk was, was made to be a weapon. It was their tool for the American Indians first, obviously before they had guns, bow and arrows and, and tomahawks. Um, they were able to throw it just because of the weight distribution, because it was lighter. They'd always have it tucked in their belt. They travel with it. But ultimately it was their, their weapon. They used it as a weapon in pretty much every war. Even when they had guns, they always had it as a backup weapon. So it was a big part of Native American history. Um, this is a great example one. This one is definitely unique. Uh, the Chogan T-Hawk is a modern day take on a hatchet. Now the purpose of this is not for woods work. Now I tested it in a lot of different scenarios where you might want to you know, use it in the woods. I use it for, for wood processing, I use it for batoning, all kinds of stuff like that. Now that's not what it was designed for. And I can tell you it will work in those situations, but it's certainly not going to be superior to a hatchet. Okay, so when I'm doing the testing and stuff, people are like, no, 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 you need a hatchet, you know, it's a better chopper. Yes, a hatchet will be a better chopper. You will have more weight distribution in the head. It will have actually a wider blade so that you have more of a wedge. You know, when you're splitting wood, you want a wedge. You don't want something skinny. This bites very nicely and very deeply, but that's not necessarily what you want. You want that wedge effect for processing wood, specifically splitting. But anyway, the purpose of this is a, a rescue tool slash defensive tool. That's what it comes down to. Um, it's very unique in that it is one solid piece of steel. It is full tang with these uh, 
uh, glass reinforced nylon scales. I'm going to talk through these scales in a little bit. I'm not a fan of them. I love the overall design. I really love the um, the choil, you know, full hand choils here. There's basically three or four main um, ways to grip this to be very comfortable. Down at the base here, if you kind of wedge your pinky down, this is for light work, okay? Now I talked about this in past videos, but I put the lantern on here. There's eyelets that go all the way through, or not eyelets, but you know, there's holes all the way through. Um, so you can do something like this if you wish. And it was extremely helpful because when I was down here with it, barehanded, every time I, I took a swing, this uh, tang rubbed against my pinky and it was very uncomfortable, okay? But anyway, these, um, you know, the scalloping in the handles creates for a lot of different positions where it feels really, really good. When you choke up on this, okay, it feels like just a nice little fixed blade. And you can get in there, do some detail work if you need to. You can brace this against your leg, you know, and work that way. There's a bunch of different cutting techniques. And just because of the fact uh, of the shape of this, it is very, very useful. Extremely useful for a camp type situation. Everything except for basically chopping a tree down. I think that the, the head is not heavy enough. Um, there's also a little bit too much heft, you know, in the handle being that you have that almost quarter inch thick uh, solid piece of steel through there. It's just, um, I like a heavier head and maybe a lighter handle, but this design is, is much superior to many, many uh, little hatchets and tomahawks out there that I've used anyway. So um, what also sets us apart is the fact that on our head we have uh, um, a sharpened edge on top and on bottom. Okay, this when when chopping into wood and doing uh, different things like that, it is a superior design in that you you're actually cutting your way out of you know where where it's wedged in. So let's say you don't have these cuts in here, you chop into a piece of wood, it sticks. Obviously, you got to pry it out, right? By having your top and bottom sharpened, I mean it's not razor sharp, but it's definitely you know it comes to probably I don't know like a maybe sixty degree inclusive edge. I mean, it's, it's a pretty fat grind here, but it's sharp enough where it's very easy to pry this back out of the wood. Um, if any of you guys out there have ever tried to chop wood with anything, pretty much, you'll find yourself uh, struggling quite a bit when you really get a good swing on that and, and wedge a blade into a piece of wood, especially if you hit a knot or something. It just, it grabs onto that thing and you can't get it out. This really, really aids in that. So I like that. And that's the design in both this Chogan, which has the hammer back, and the, um, the Kanji, which has a pointed back. Um, I want to talk about the scales for a little bit. I don't like these scales. Uh, when I first got the thing, it looked cool. It felt great in the hands. I mean, it was amazing. Oh man, this is so cool. When you start using this thing, um, you're going to find, at least for me anyway, uh, I did not like the scales at all. In fact, I might take these scales off completely. Uh, this is the one thing I do like about this design is that you just have regular Phillips head screws. Um, you can just take the screws out and literally take the, the scales off. You can do that for cleaning, or in my purpose, or my case, I might just do a full paracord wrap on this whole thing. I think it'd be much more comfortable. It would slim down the handle uh, quite a bit, so I'm not sure how it would you know, feel in that sense. Maybe I'll do an update video in the future if I do that. Um, but from the factory, there's no Loctite, so they loosened up fairly quickly. So biggest tip, if you're going to get one of these, um, either version, make sure you uh, take these screws out, put some Loctite on there. You want that to be nice and secure. When, you, when you're really banging on stuff with this, um, it, it's not going to be uh, you know, very secure for you unless you do use the Loctite first. You don't want your handles falling off. That's going to be a dangerous situation. You might completely you know, let this thing fly out of your hand. Who knows where it's going to go. Um, besides that, the grip. The texture looks really, really cool, and it really looks grippy. And when you're just handling it like this, it feels great. If, oh man, this is never going to fall out of my hand. But with use, barehanded, with gloves it's different. Gloves, it's totally fine. I just had mechanics gloves and it, was, it felt wonderful. But barehanded, both in um, regular dry scenario, and I also use this in a, on a rainy day and it was very misty, um, I did not like this grip at all. The best way I can describe this is ticklish. I know that sounds really funny, but just running my hand, my bare you know, fingers and palm over this, it, it's almost tickling my skin. Um, it's uncomfortable in that, I mean, it's all smooth and stuff. I wish either it was the handle were completely smooth or it was a more aggressive grip. Because all these tips and points and peaks are rounded, it, I don't know, it offers a very strange feel. And for me, it wasn't, um, it wasn't doing a good job as a grip. It was just uncomfortable. Um, so my personal recommendation, if you get one of these things and you do plan to really use it, use it, um, 
I would either, like I said, sand this down completely, create your own kind of stippling or your own, you know, roughed up texture, or just remove these scales and put them aside. You can keep them brand new just in case you ever do sell or trade the knife or something. Put these aside and try like a full paracord wrap. It might be a little bit more comfortable. Plus it'll drop the weight down a little bit. Weight on this is one pound, eight and a half ounces. Well, 8.6 ounces. So it's not a lightweight. Okay, once again, you're gonna find fatigue when using this in a scenario of say a, a, a camp type situation or a survival situation. Um, but that's not what it's designed for. So it can't really be a hit on the tool because it wasn't designed to do that specific work. It's just, I wanted to see if it would. And it, it didn't, uh, at least not to the capability of, of other options out there right now. Um, the overall size on here is 14 inches and our cutting surface is just under three inches. It's 2.93 came razor razor sharp screaming sharp you can see the um the finish on here has worn fairly nicely i mean for the use yes it's coming off but yes this was heavily heavily used so um, uh, i'm happy with it it's on par any kind of coatings powder coat um teflon coating across the board they're all gonna wear it's just a matter of how fast something like this it shouldn't be a big deal for you um of course this is the uh, sk5 carbon steel uh, on these same thing that uh you know, cold steel have been using for a long time. I'm not 100% on this, but I think Camelus used to be their supplier. Camelus knives, I think, if not the SK5 carbon, which is just a proprietary name, um, if not the steel itself, at least some of the models. But regardless, just something that popped in my head when I mentioned that. But, um, you know, it's a very good performing steel. It has a very low uh, heat treat on this, anywhere between 54 and 55 Rockwell. Um, but you want that when you have something you have an edge that's going to be you know performing a lot of blunt impact um, you don't want it chipping out you want it much softer but i found as far as chopping you know wood anyway um, i didn't do any kind of plastics or metal or anything like that it's held up very nicely i have no chips no rolls nothing i have a nice razor sharp edge still very very good performance as, as far as that's concerned in fact i got a piece of paper here let's see and get a, a cut to show you this now i have not sharpened this at all so i really have no idea how this is gonna you know cut paper but keep in mind i mean you're talking maybe four weeks of use on and off at least you cannot beat that there's no touch up no the first one was impressive <laughs> there you go so very happy with the uh, steel performance on this and again, very low uh, low heat treat on this. So, very cool. I would really, really recommend doing some kind of paracord wrap on here. Um, doing it the way I did, I mean, you know, measuring out the, uh, the length, I'm able to, uh, you know, use a wrist lanyard or just wrap it around my hand first and I can grip it in any three or four of the positions on the handle very comfortably and not worry about it falling out. Um, you know, overall, it's a very, very cool tool. I really, really like it. I'm a big fan of it, but I cannot recommend this to be a, a great option for, say, like something to pack away when you're hiking. Um, you might want to go with more of a dedicated hatchet that's going to perform better specifically for wood processing. Think about what you're going to be using your tools for. I think this is a fantastic little uh, tomahawk to keep in your car, um, to keep in a bob or something. Um, as far as defensive purposes, this will certainly get the job done. Um, when are you going to need a little hatchet to, or, you know, tomahawk in this case, to uh, defend your life? Who knows? Uh, <laughs> probably never, to be honest, but it's a pretty darn cool piece to have. And more specifically, you can definitely, um, you know, get through a car. You can use the hammer, you know, portion on this, break windows open. Um, you can literally chop a handle off of a car, you know, to get in if it was locked. You can tear through metal with this thing. And I'm hoping maybe in the future I will have the opportunity to, uh, to do that uh, with a bunch of different things I have, not just this. But you can see CRKT's uh, website, um, and I think they have a YouTube link somewhere. I'll link you. I'll find the video and link it down below. But they did a, a Cold Steel style test. You know, it's it. Beat the crap out of a car. It's very entertaining to watch, but you can certainly see, um, you know, this knife or knife, this uh, <laughs> tomahawk in action on steel. And the chip doesn't, you know, the chip. Good Lord, I can't talk. The, uh, the edge doesn't chip out. I mean, it's amazing what they, uh, they do with this, uh, this tomahawk. I and mean, it goes to the paces. And it's, it's fantastic. It's great. A lot of you guys that, you know, 
I know you guys watch the Cold Steel stuff and the proof DVDs and all that. It's very entertaining and you're like, you know, why doesn't everyone do this? Everyone does do that. Every, pretty much every major knife company out there, they do testing very similar to that. They just don't post videos on it. However, I was very pleased to, to see that CRKT did actually do a, a very similar style video where they just beat the crap out of cars, you know, and it just goes to show the durability of this piece overall. Are you going to be doing that? No, but it's a very interesting, uh, very interesting tomahawk. Uh, as far as the, um, the sheath on this, it's like a Secure X style sheath. I love the design. You can see that it's interchangeable between the uh, um, the Kanji and the Chogun. So it does have the, uh, the tip integrated. So, you know, the sheath will work with either one. Snaps in, very simple. Basically straight in. You know, if you angle it, you might cut into the plastic a little bit. But, you know, if you put it, you know, straight up, pops right in. Very easy. It's very secure. There's no play or anything in there. And, of course, to secure it further, there is a uh, little strap here. Um, can catch this uh, Molly style with the eyelets. They have some slots here, which uh, I have not tried using. I have a couple of spare straps like this, and I suppose you could set this up on your belt to kind of basically mount this uh, head, you know, or sheath to the belt, so you can carry it that way if you choose. But um, I just, for me, I just left it in my, uh, my belt, old school, Native American style. That's it, just slip the handle right through the belt, carry it like that, kind of on your side towards your back. So that's basically it. That is the CRKT Chogun T-Hawk. Um, not my first choice for something to camp with, although it would certainly get the job done. Um, some things to consider. Once again, the grip on here, not to my liking. You may be different, you know, check one out if you have the capability of, of handling one before you buy it, even better. Um, I think it's a little bit heavy and a little bit, uh, it falls a little short of being what I would consider a great um, hatchet style tool. For, for camping purposes or hiking or any kind of woods work. Uh, something to keep in a bob, something to um, you know keep in your vehicle. It's awesome, it's amazing. These are gonna run you about 150 bucks depending on where you go. Is it worth $150? To a lot of people it will be. Um, to me, I think it is, but consider this. For the price, I think it's much more of this is cool as opposed to this is useful. Yes, it's very useful. But there are other options that are even cheaper that are going to you know, surpass this specific to wilderness type uh, situations. So if that makes any sense. Basically, what it comes down to is this is an awesome, very cool urban thing to have. Whereas if you want to go hiking and stuff, this is not your best option, in my opinion. At least not for the money anyway. So that's it. Hopefully you guys uh, enjoy the review. Maybe learned a thing or two. Maybe take some suggestions if you guys do have these. I'm gonna, I didn't try it yet. I'm going to do a separate video on this, I think. But I will take this, these scales off and um, see what the situation underneath here is to uh, you know, do a full wrap on this and see if that, how that basically feels. So I'll definitely, you know what, I'll, I'll promise you. I'll make videos on that in the future. All right? So that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day, and I will see you soon. Take care.